something that I thought of earlier in making this case of Jesus as the missing teacher implies something, as was implied when we talk about the Bible doing, like, the Bible as artistic implies that it's, that it is art. Like the Bible doing literary things implies that it is, you know, a work of literature, obviously. So to say Jesus is the missing teacher implies that he's, well, A, has something to teach us, which you've been talking about, or B, took on the role of a teacher. So um, I think you have, you you told me you have some stuff you want to share in, in that vein of things. So, yeah. So the first thing that I want to share is a video by, um, of Marty Solomon's teacher, Ray Vanderlaan, um, talking to, I believe, a group of high schoolers or young college students. Um, and he's talking to them. It's a four hour talk that spans the course of a day. I would recommend listening to the whole thing. We're not going to listen to the whole thing. Um, but it's, it's really, really good. And he, he nails down on just Jewish teaching methods in general and an experience that he had when leading a, um, a learning trip in Israel. And then we're going to go from that to, I'm going to walk us through an example of Jesus doing some teaching in the Gospels. Before I do either of those, I want to read one last quick thing. It's what we cut short um, earlier when reading from Willard. Um, so if you want to pull that back up. Yeah, I'll, can. I'll pull it up on my screen. All right. Um, so it's that bottom paragraph. I'm just going to read the first little bit, the first maybe sentence or two. The disappearance of Jesus as teacher explains why today in Christian churches of whatever leaning, Okay, so right, left, whatever. Little effort is made to teach people to do what he did and taught. Once again, it is a natural consequence of our basic message. I lied, I'm going to continue. Who among us has personal knowledge of a seminar or course of study and practice being offered in a Christian educational program on how to love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spit on you and make your life miserable. Much less than one on how to conduct our business or profession on behalf of Jesus Christ. The most common response by Christians in the real world, in quotes, to Christ's teaching is precisely business is business. And we all know what that means. Sincere teaching on such matters simply does not appear on the Christian's intellectual horizon. As such, um, as something that might be done, we do not seriously consider Jesus as our teacher on how to live. Hence, we cannot live of our... Uh, we cannot think of ourselves in our moment-to-moment -moment existence as his students or disciples. So we turn to popular speakers and writers, some Christians and some not. Whoever happens to be writing books and running talks, uh, running talk shows and seminars on matters that concern us. We learn from others because we have the disappearance of Jesus as our teacher. Mm -hmm. So let's watch this example that Ray gives of Jesus teaching or Jewish teaching, and then we'll walk through an example of Jesus doing the same thing. And quote that, and I'll go on for 20 minutes. When they finish their discussion, somebody will formulate a question back to the teacher and say, well, if one of the faces of the monitor lizard is God said, don't eat things that eat carrion, why don't we eat carrion? Now what you've done is you've answered the question with another question, and the rabbi will then think about the question, and then he will posit another question. And that'll go on for an hour. And not one single answer is ever given. 
Notice how often when people came to Jesus, they said, may I ask you a question? Jesus said, yes. And they would say, what's the chief commandment? And what would Jesus do? What does the law say? He'll ask him a question back. He's in the temple at 12 years of age, and they were amazed at his questions. Not his answers, his questions. I remember about five or seven years ago, I took a group, which was largely Christian school uh, Christians who teach school, mostly Christian school, but some public school teachers too. And we went to Israel with a focus on what can we take out of this that helps us become better educators. And there was a lady, I I'm, I'm tend to be way too dogmatic on some things, and I said, remember, Jesus is not the answer man, he's the question man. He doesn't want to give you all the answers. He wants to help you raise the right questions. Well, that offended her in a nice way. She wasn't mad at me, but she said, no, Jesus is my answer man. He's always given me all the answers. Okay, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said it that way. We were in Tzvat, Orthodox Jewish community, way up in northern Israel. And people were, I wanted people to experience the Orthodox Jewish way of life. And so they're wandering through the streets and buying the kind of stuff you talked about, people asked me about. And she, her name is Dottie, she walked into this photography shop. Now there's an old rabbi in Tzvat, still has the concentration number on his arm, Polish. And he's a photographer. He must be 85 or 90, I don't know. And um, maybe older. She's looking around at this stuff. Now, she's a photographer, too, and she's seeing this gorgeous stuff. It's all impressionistic because they can't take pictures of people and animals. So she said to him, without realizing what she was doing, she said, may I ask you a question? And he said, yes, what is it? And she said, which is your favorite? And he said, are you married? <laughs> to which she said, and she's very fortunate, she said, yes, why? Because if she had said yes, he would have said, oh. And she never would have figured out what on earth that conversation was about. She said, yes, why? And he said, do you have any children? And she said, yes, a son and two daughters. Why? And he said, which one is your favorite? <laughs> now, understand the power of the rabbinic model because what she ended up doing is answering her own question, which means far more than if I gave her the answer. Because then it's mine. She can pitch it. She can discount it. She can believe it or not. This was her answer. She came out of the store crying. She said, I met Jesus in there. I had to run in and see whether it was right. But <laughs> she, that's the rabbinic model. That's how they teach. And that is just so, so compelling. And we see Jesus do this all the time, all the time.